Hello again from Healing Inspirations, and today we are going to take a look at the world's temperature anomalies, which are extreme right now. So let's take a look at North America to start. This is earth.nelskull.net. If you'd like to go and get data for yourself, it's updated every three hours. So this is current for February the 7th, 2018. All right, so here we have uh, North America, and we can see the polar vortex, which normally should be uh, up in the Arctic region, descending down over Canada. Uh, notice it's, and we're going to take a look at the temperatures in this purple. This is the cold, uh, minus 37.9 Celsius. And for the American audience, we're going to switch over to Fahrenheit right now, minus 36 0.3 Fahrenheit. So that is definitely cold. There's the Arctic, the polar vortex there. And you can see the, the uh, cold from the north descending to the Gulf of Mexico. And you notice how it follows the land. Notice how the oceans are warmer. We'll take a temperature reading out here. And you can see 55.4 Fahrenheit. Go over the, uh, here on the land here. 54, same as the ocean. And then you go a little more to, toward the east, and you can see the temperature dropping off dramatically. We get a minus, uh, we get a 16 Fahrenheit, and this is the polar vortex descending down, following the jet stream. And uh, you can see that these areas down in the south, and you're talking about, you know, uh, Texas, Louisiana, Georgia. Um, there's a there's a great deal of agriculture down here, and when and it supplies our food in the winter. Not only well, we also get food from the rest of the world, but we're talking about North American produce here. And when cold like this descends from the north to the south, we have a problem. It will cause uh, damage to the crops and will cause our food prices to go up. So you can see the correlation between the uh, jet stream uh, temperature and our food prices. This is another thing we have to consider when we're talking about global warming. There can be global hunger unless we address this issue about the changing in the changing jet stream. Uh, so the, so you can see the cold descending down toward uh, the Gulf of Mexico and then uh, toward the east you can see it riding straight up toward the North Pole again uh, along the water. Uh, and you can see uh, this is the geographic North Pole right here. So uh, toward the Eastern Hemisphere, go into the green, that's above zero. Above zero, and we're talking well within the Arctic Circle, not very far from the geographic North Pole. Temperatures above freezing at this time of year. That is a driving warm wedge that's being pushed up there. So what goes up? must come down as the warm uh, the ocean currents drive this warm water into the Arctic it destabilizes and warms the region and pushes the cold air again toward the south and because there's less energy in that jet stream because the North Pole temperature difference is less than it would should be from here to the equator uh, because there's less temperature difference that jet stream rather than having more energy and going faster and uh, more along the same latitude is allowed to dip and go further down to the southern latitude and then back up. And that's called amplification. So this is the temperature and we're assuming this is the jet stream. Well, let's take a look at the jet stream. So we'll go to 250 millibars. We'll go to wind. And uh, now you can see that the jet stream is pulling the cold air down toward the south see and then pushing it back up you see how the cold follows the jet stream pattern as this amplifies it brings a cold uh, more extreme temperatures to the south so it's not getting colder folks it's because the earth in as a whole is getting warmer and the cold is being pushed around and speaking about being pushed around I noticed an extreme anomaly to the uh, west if you take a look at Hawaii over here you can see that the jet stream uh, it, it's just just like a spike, just like a knife actually, just cutting straight down and then reversing direction and coming back up. That's a blocking pattern because instead of that air flowing 
around the earth in a in a more uh, over time it would be moving much faster toward the west it's moving toward the south and then coming up this creates a block and uh, if there is a moist uh, there's a rain uh, event going on it will deluge it will be able to deliver more water more rain we've been seeing that all around the world with record rains falling in a short a short time cities receiving months of rain within just a few hours that's caused by this folks this is the heating of the atmosphere causing the jet stream to bend so if there's a dry persistent area that's being blocked you'll create a drought and if there's moist air that is being blocked you'll create an, an extreme deluge or rain event so let's we'll have to take a look at hawaii's weather coming up and we're just going to quickly shift over here to europe um yeah and over the atlantic ocean we see another huge cog this is a high pressure system uh, off of africa off of spain actually and this uh, high pressure system and then a low pressure system you know like cogs just like cogs and because the jet stream is allowed to bend and warp uh, those systems are locked or uh, blocked into these areas and it's bringing it as we mentioned either rain or uh, lack of rain depending on the pressure and that will hold that system in place creating another extreme event so we'll have to take a look at the weather coming up to europe very shortly as this system migrates uh, toward the east so there we go folks i just wanted to say one thing about this problem there's a problem but we have a solution the solution is simply to plant more trees to absorb the carbon in the atmosphere to allow the it to cool in the arctic and that will balance the jet stream and make it more regular as it has been throughout all human history um or at least for the uh for the several thousand years now there's been changes obviously dramatic changes but the rate of change right now is what the problem is the co2 is going up 100 to 1000 times faster than at any point in history and that includes the great permian extinction 252 million years ago so uh we need to reforest in south america we need to plant trees we need to stop removing the trees and burning them for meat the trees are fantastic carbon scrubbers from the atmosphere same thing goes here for africa there's a around this area here there's a great deal of burning going on um you know if you take a look at the uh if you take a look at the carb co2 at the surface now the white areas represent where the co2 concentration is stronger and the redder areas where it is uh, less remember we just passed a 400 part per million uh, threshold a few uh, in 2015 I believe um, I can be corrected possibly I believe it was 2015 at any rate we're over 400 parts now and you can see down here at 425 parts per million where I've dropped the pin in the in the mid plains if we move toward uh, New York Washington down here 439 uh, 400 39 parts per million up around uh, new york 432 um, we can see that that is way above 400 well keep in mind it is winter in the northern hemisphere and that means all the vegetation is sleeping and again proving the point that you need vegetation to absorb the co2 and hence we should be leaving our trees alone not removing them for unneeded flesh which actually is not very healthy for us it will shorten our lifespan give us a myriad of disease because it's causing species extinction because as we remove forests the animals have nowhere to live and as we remove forest the whole ecosystem changes of the earth it'll become a barren quiet place if we continue this destruction in south america the burning that's going on down here for meat continues so you can see uh, the co2 quite high it's interesting that the co2 is higher over the forested area that's where there's burning going on and in uh, africa right now if we take a look over here we can see that the uh, carbon 
or the CO2. Again, another burning line. There's forest over here, and they're doing a lot of clearing or forest burning to uh, for agriculture. And it's mainly for meat, folks. 70% of the Earth's surface of agricultural land, 45% of the total Earth's surface is agricultural land, and 70% of that is used to produce meat. We're using half, almost throwing away half our planet to produce meat. And so, of course, uh, we're pumping out the CO2 from our industry, our cars, our energy sources, because we're using old uh, 19th century technology for energy rather than 21st century technology. Certain politicians are keeping that back. And as a result of pumping the CO2 out and on the other side, taking away the trees that would take it or scrub it out of the atmosphere, it's like a one-two punch toward pushing us toward global heating. And global heating can, will have tremendously destructive effects. Our scientists are not wrong when they say we can expect hurricanes, flooding, drought. And in fact, look at last year in the United States. It was the costliest year ever recorded at over $3 billion for the United States alone. And the extreme world events, uh, extreme weather events worldwide are definitely up. In fact, you can check out, and I will post some videos, extreme uh, weather news videos. And they are shocking when you see the level of flooding, drought, and deluge around the world that's not being reported on our news. We have to take action, folks. Healing Inspirations is about taking that action. We're, we're fast uh, approaching a tipping point where permafrost in the Arctic regions and below the ocean floor can raise to a temperature that will release gigatons of methane from underneath. This will heat the earth very quickly. Within a week, five degrees Celsius jump is possible. And once it goes up, it doesn't come down. And uh, well, five degrees Celsius worldwide can result in extreme suffering and would actually migration. Africa's already having a problem with the heat and it's only going to get worse. So this area, we have uh, people migrating, leaving unbearable conditions where they can't grow any food anymore. There's no water. The migration crisis into Europe will increase dramatically over the next few years as this area continues to dry out and life there becomes unlivable. So, uh, we can solve these problems if we have the political will. And even the individual will is huge. Do you realize, even without our governments, if people just decided to cut the meat off their plates, we could reforest the earth? And there are delicious vegan recipes that you would never miss meat at all. And that's the crime. We're not being told what's available, but we have to take action. Help Healing Inspirations protect our children. We only have a few years before that tipping point will be reached. Don't listen to the politicians who tell you it's business as usual. And when you have the time, study the Permian extinction. It was the greatest extinction, the fourth mass extinction on Earth. We're currently, by the way, in the sixth, in the age of the Anthropocene, the age of man. We're losing 200 species every day. Uh, that is approximately 100, somewhere between 100 and to 1,000 times, again, higher than the natural extinction rate. We can stop this, but we have to work together. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll be back broadcasting again shortly. Tune in for more inspirational tweets and posts educational toward improving our health, the health of our loved ones, the health of our environment, and the protection of our children. <laughs>